So, hi folks. Um, typically, I'm YouTubing this. That's not occurring today, so we're going to do the recording of this meeting so that we can post it for the folks that do watch over YouTube. I'm just doing a little tech talk. Yeah. I was and uh, we'll get going here. Well, and I, I, I feel like I need to be sitting in front of this. Talking. Yeah, it, it's going it, it, no, to, the, the, I'll, I'll aim this camera so that it's a good wide shot of the room. All right, so that's, okay. there it is. Sweet. Okay. Hey, you know, five minutes late. Sorry about that. We'll be better at starting on time in the future. Welcome, everybody, to the first PTO meeting um, of this school year. I'm Shauna Cox. I'm currently the elected president. Um, we are going to have elections in uh, a few minutes, and there I'm going to put forth a co-president for your consideration to join me in this role, um, because you can see from the very white and plain PowerPoint, I need help because I don't have the bandwidth to be doing this as well as, as I know that, that Sana and I could do together. Um, and then also the vice president and secretary positions are up for consideration today. And then I don't know, do we actually have to vote on readathon and plant chair? I looked at the bylaws. I don't think we actually have to, um, but we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Um, one, I forgot to say that my pronouns are she, her, and I invite you to share yours as well as you introduce yourselves. Two, we have Spanish interpretation services. Can you say that in Spanish for people who may not understand it that well? Okay. Uh, if anyone okay. would like to have assistance with translation to Spanish, please. Ya hay necesidad de ayuda para la interpretación al español. Está disponible. Okay. Great. Um. Are you taking notes today? <clears throat> I have recorded. The recording's going. The recording is and going. I, I think we will crowdsource our notes for the day. Okay. Sounds okay. good. That seems entirely fair. Okay. So um, we usually go around the room, say our names, and the grade of our students, which never makes anybody stick in my head. Um, I am terrible at retaining people. I do remember that Diego's superpower is people's, people's <laughs> names. When we did a meeting, children's names, not adults. <laughs> oh, okay. well, um, when Diego ran a meeting, he had people introduce themselves and share their superpower, which was basically whatever you think your strength is. If that's putting you on the spot too much, tell me your favorite fruit. But to do that first, we're going to break some super break some norms here. It has been demonstrated that if you share your nugget, whatever it is, first your name has something to hook onto in the person's brain. <laughs> Doing this somewhat for myself, <laughs> somewhat for all the rest of you. Um, and it's really uncomfortable because we are so used to saying our names first. So let's see, my superpower is organizing. Uh, I love cherries. And if you'd like to share your child and grade, my son Magden is in third grade and my name is Shauna Cox. See how awkward that is? I almost forgot to say my name. <laughs> Next. Wow. Okay. Uh, my superpower is, um, what is my superpower? Uh, this is hard. Peach is my favorite fruit. <laughs> <laughs> what is my superpower? Um, being comfortable with conflict yeah. um, is my superpower. And uh, my kid is Sonia, and he's in actually Magda's class. Yes. In, in, uh, their first year here, and my name is Sana. I'm a Spanish interpreter, so I'm not, I might not be here again, but I can share too. Uh, so my name is Adriana, and I think my superpower, at least for the last summer, was that I was able to complete a triathlon without training. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> and, um, uh, my superpower is <laughs> Um, it was quite stressful, no, but um, and uh, I love cherries. And um, oh, and I had to say my name at the end. Okay, so my name is Adriana. Hard, right? Yeah. 
Yes. It is hard because I always leave. Hello, everyone. Yep. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here. I appreciate uh, all of you uh, supporting our school and, and joining us. Uh, I've already shared my superpower in the spring meeting that we had. Uh, I do think it's trying to memorize all students' names that walk through our door, and so I try to do that every single morning and uh, single them out and greet them and say good morning to their name. Um, my favorite fruit is also peaches, but I like really hard, crunchy peaches, not soft, crunchy peaches. I think those are kind of gross. Uh, and another super power I have is picking out mangoes. And so I feel like I can really get a good mango by the touch and smell of it. And so that's the power that I have. And your name. And my name is Diego. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Um, hello, everyone. I would say my superpower is music, especially playing the violin. Mm -hmm. Do you have any violin teachers? I know some people. Um, my favorite fruit is apples, especially this time of year, and I'm Christine, the assistant principal. Um, my superpower is using objects for not their intended purpose. <laughs> um, uh, my, I love apples. I'm very excited about September. Um, my child is Alex. He's in high five. If you've seen a little blonde boy scooting around in a power wheelchair, that's Alex. Um, and my name is Kate. Um, I can't think of a superpower right now, but my favorite fruit is raspberries. Um, I have a kindergartner named Kevon, and my name is Kate Worm. Hey, sweet Kate Worm. All right, back room. Then we'll come back to this side. Uh, I follow the order correctly. My superpower, I think I read pretty fast, but I miss a little bit of context doing that. Um, my favorite fruit is watermelon. My name is Tana. And I have a kid in fourth grade and one in first grade. Oh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's your turn. <laughs> Oh, did I like jump in line or something? No, no, you're next. So, oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I okay. My superpower is maybe details. Uh, for detail. Um, my favorite fruit is maybe raspberry. Uh, hard to pick one. Uh, I have a kindergartner named Arthur, and my name is Marky. Can you spell it for me? M A R K I E. Thank you. Yeah. That also helps me put it in the brain. Mm -hmm. All right. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I got it. Yeah. I've got a superpower. Um, but, uh, I'm going to say. Uh, camping. Go with the camping superpower. Um, favorite fruit. Yeah, that's hard. I'm in the fruit and veggie business, so currently apples. <laughs> um, Arthur, kindergartner, and last. Nice Did I miss anything there? No. And you know, just this fruit was an alternative to the superpower <laughs> if the superpower was too much pressure. Oh, just my nice. superpower is fruit. <laughs> <laughs> Just make it. <laughs> um, you just said my name. Uh, okay, I think my superpower is that I have this like unfounded sense of confidence that I can like, just learn to do anything, and so I just jump into projects and I'm like, I'll just figure it out as we go. At least, it, like, you know, you know, sometimes I get in trouble, but sometimes it works out. So I don't know what you want to break that in a concise way. I like confidence. It's all good. <laughs> Um, oh. no, favorite fruit. Oh, you know, she's got a fruit. Sorry. Champagne mangoes, the like okay. little yellow ones. Yeah. Um, and Mandy. And I have a fourth grader, Edie. Oh my goodness. And they are in Miss Ferster's class. Okay. And I also work here. No. Congratulations on that. Yeah. All right. Uh, my superpower is bad puns. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite fruit. I think it's some love to grapes. I feel like they're kind of underrated. Um, I've got a second grader in Burnett who is in the Schilberts class. Uh, and I'm top. They should have had those who currently have other roles introduce themselves in that way, but we'll do that in a minute. All right, so Um, Hi, 
My superpower lately is craftiness, and I have a fifth grader and a third grader this year, and I'm not a craftiness like crafts. Or like craftiness. I'm <laughs> craftiness. <laughs> yeah, both, but mostly like making things and craftiness projects. Yeah. All right. My superpower is probably the opposite of Diego's of memorizing faces, but the terrible names. But if I see your face, I'll recommend you. Um, my favorite fruit is Camelo. I have a second grader, uh, Everett, and a fifth grader, Ren, and my name is Peter. Okay, we're on the board. My superpower is spreadsheets. I love strawberries. And I have a first grader named Kai in Mrs. Ramfrey's class, and my name is Mel, and I use they, them pronouns. Um, I'm going to do a non-school one. On, one of my superpowers is training dogs. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite fruit is blueberries. I really feel compelled to share that, <laughs> even though I know I didn't have to. And I am Sue, and I'm the eye coordinator at Bancroft. Hi, everyone. My name is no, I'm not going to do it. My superpower is selecting the correct size Tupperware for leftovers. Nice. So wow. that's good. Um, I have a child, Hope, in second grade, and a high fiver, Morgan, in Alex's class. But she goes by mom. But not in our house, so it's confusing. <laughs> um, and my name is Kate Elwell, and I use she her funds. <clears throat> Uh, my superpower is maybe organizing. I like papayas, and my name is Eric, and I have a first grader in this Lucy class. Okay, and last, but absolutely not least. Oh, and we have somebody slide in. Okay, all right, you're definitely not last. All good, all good. Uh, my superpower, I'm going to go with grilling. <laughs> um, uh, and for fruit, I'm going to say it's not really this fruit, but I grew, I, I enjoy grilling watermelons. Just mm -hmm. cute thing, you know. uh, my name is Vipal. I have a third grader name. Um, I have a third grader. You're a fourth grader. You're a fourth grader. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait a second. They say it, they, they graduated from high school. Yeah. It's a hard transition. <laughs> Uh, did you catch the pattern of what we're doing? Yes. Okay. I will not say my name first. Okay. Um, my superpower is remaining calm in a crisis. Um, I love lemons. And my name is Tasha. And I'm a kindergartner. It's my second year with Mrs. Abrahamson, so that's really exciting. And then a second grader in Miss Gloria's class. Well, thank you all for indulging. I think we have Zoom next. How how many people do we have on Zoom? Somebody unmute. Superpower, favorite fruit, name. I can go and then I can call on the other person who's unmuting next. So um, let's see. My, my superpower is making really, really teeny tiny fairy garden items. And I really like apples. And my name is Michelle. I use she or they pronouns. And I have a third grader in Miss Kennard's class and I am going to call on Melissa but don't remember Melissa's name. <laughs> Hi. My superpower is trivial knowledge and random connections and I like raspberries and I have a third grader in Miss Vanderlyn's class and my name is Melissa and I'm gonna call on I'm in tech Zoom. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Hi, I'm Aliyah Vinick. I'm sorry, for some reason I'm logged in as my work account. Um, but I am a she, her, my favorite. I don't know what my, I like all fruit. I have a loud child uh, who's chat and is in third grade. And my superpower is I'm very nosy. <laughs> and um, I'm going to pass it over to Megan. Hi, uh, we, we just did the strengths thing at work. So my superpower is officially adaptability. Uh, <laughs> my favorite fruit is uh, plums. And I have a fifth grader and a kindergartner. And my name is Megan olson Baby Kowser, And I will pass it to Justin.
Hello. Uh, my superpower, I believe, is the ability to hit my head on any nearby object. <laughs> um, it's not a great superpower. Um, let's see. Favorite fruit probably is plum. I have a fifth grader in Miss Letcher's class. I will pass it and over to is, Justin. And your name is? My name is Justin. Justin, thank you, and Justin. Let's see. I think that maybe is just about everybody. Oh, no, Shauna, it looks like. Oh, no, that's me. Oh, okay. We've got okay. everybody then, it looks like. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you for indulging me in that little activity of community building. Um, we won't do something quite that elaborate every week, but or every month, but you can rely on me to come with some sort of prompt. If that makes you anxious, put a note in your registration and I'll let you know what the prompt is and you can think about it ahead of time because I sure have been caught off guard from time to time. We have like an awesome collection of superpowers here um, and I'm really excited to see this many folks out to this first meeting. Um, I'm going to spend just a few minutes talking about how the PTO works then we're gonna have some elections, uh, principals update, board reports, and then we'll hear from Safe Routes to School, Readathon, and then I should have put matters arising from all the things that I forgot. Okay, so the PTO's mission, which I looked up when I looked at the bylaws, for the first time an hour ago, full disclosure, um, is supporting the education of children at Bancroft Elementary by fostering relationships among the school, parents, teachers, and community. And I think that those of us who've been on PTO for a while or been in the school for a while would acknowledge that, that the PTO seems to be doing a pretty good job of that is, you know, what we do. We do activities to um, support teachers and foster connections. Um, we just had somebody step in the back. Hello, welcome. Yeah. Here again. So, maybe, yeah. You need to go. Conmigo para que yo te interprete. Excellent. Um, so, uh, as you can see, one of the new things we're doing this year is providing Spanish translation services for anyone who comes. I think that's going to mean some adjustments for some of us who speak voluminously and <laughs> quickly, <laughs> but we will do our best. Um, we, I think that um, the rest of the board would, would agree. We haven't really talked about this yet, but my goal as a president is to keep as many voices and bring as many voices to the table as possible. I feel like we tend to have decent turnout um, at the beginning, and then it kind of drops off. Um, and uh, we also tend to have a certain demographic represented in the room that's not necessarily representative of our school. And so we are going to take steps to try to, you know, shift that needle a little bit. Um, the way the PTO is organized is we've got a president, that's me, Vice President is currently Robin Anderson. That's a position that will be up for not, uh, for uh, voting. Treasurer is Liz Thompson. Liz can't be here with us today, but she's been treasurer now for a year or two. She's got a full year under her belt. She's been very good at it. Being treasurer is not easy. Um, secretary was Tana Kitt. Is Tana? Tana wasn't here. That's me. Oh, wait. What? It's Tana, but it's fine. It's a hard name. <laughs> Did I write Tana on the board? Yep. Mm -hmm. There. Oh, I'm so sorry. You were just reading too fast. I... <laughs> no, see, I'm terrible. I'm sorry, Tana. Um, and then uh, Michelle, who was on Zoom, is our communications chair. Um, that's basically our uh, public affairs liaison. Um, Readathon chair is Mandy Stein. Uh, I am also, I've also put myself forward to stay the plant sale chair um, because I feel like I finally got it like dialed in <laughs> um, and have some really good ideas for uh, streamlining it further to keep it awesome and also net a little bit more of the proceeds. Um, Alia uh, took 
the charge on the spirit wear, which is these last two are actually new initiatives. And for those of you who maybe don't attend as frequently as others, um, we welcome the idea of big new initiatives, especially when the people who bring them forward would like to carry them <laughs> forward. So um, there, you know, there was a, there were a number of us who were interested in spirit wear, but but Alia really took Alia. it. Up. Aaliyah, Aaliyah, I'm sorry, thank you for correcting me, I'm going to Aaliyah, uh, across the line. Um, and then we'll hear more about the Safe Routes to School program um, from Kate a little bit later in the, uh, in the meeting. And then we've got Tom Harmon and Alyssa Hansen who are at large. Um, any parent or teacher can be a member of the PTO. These folks are the... Um, the leadership by which we count for things like quorum in the room. Um, this was like coming out of my head in random order, and I know I missed some, but our main activities um, in terms of fundraising, the two big ones with the plus signs on the dollars, the readathon in the fall, spring plant sale. Um, we also, we, let's see if I get this right, me, Paul. We host Turkey Bingo School Supports school hosts winter art night we support or do i have it backwards no th this is one of those things where the relationship has been so dynamic <laughs> in part because of covid yeah. but the but certainly it turkey bingo and, and and winter arts is a school event the last couple of years we just took the lead on turkey and then we followed their lead but who knows what's the, what the future we have, we have some thoughts yeah <laughs> <laughs> um Yay for a very open and excellent relationship. Um, we also um, will we'll coordinate play dates from time to time. Um, I, our two biggest sort of single categories of expenditures are field trips, um, field trip funding, and then teacher projects. And then the Safe Ride to School has money associated with it, but I'm going to leave it up to Kate to describe how that goes. Did I miss any big ones? Folks, if, if I may, just clarification for the sake of the recording, because we know this is going to live on in posterity. The field trip funding, we manage an account for the school uh, that um, is not our money to choose yes or no. The school asks us we need to pay for buses, we need to pay for activity fees for a field trip, and that particular account is 100% earmarked to field trips. But we are the managers of it because we have a checkbook. The teacher projects and other, oh, go ahead, sorry, go yeah, ahead. So this interpreter. Now that we have somebody that needs interpretation. Oh, then the this is for what I'm Okay. So Mama there is has most of what I said. If she needs help, she'll let me know and then I might pause. Yeah. So then okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And hold up a finger in front of my face if I need to stop for a Okay. Okay. And then the rest of our uh, initiatives or projects comes out of our operating budget comes out of the PTO's operating budget. And that's the kind of thing that gets voted up or down, yes or no, on, on the expenditure. And that's uh, what we fundraise for. The field trip fund uh, field trip funds comes primarily from a large donation from the Masonic uh, chapter uh, just down the street, as well as from all of you. Some of you actually donate directly to that field trip fund, which is great. And so there are two funds. I think something to take care of, and this is foretelling a little bit, there is some confusion in terms of donating to the school that's happened this year in particular that we'll take care of during your audience. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would also put on there uh, book fairs. Great. And then also the end of the year family podcasts. Okay. Yes. I knew I would forget some sitting downstairs in the lobby listening to the Minneapolis kids shriek in the <laughs> main room as I tried to put this together. So um, that is part of why, as we move on to elections, um, I would first like to put forth the idea of my bringing a co-president uh, into the presidency role. We don't think there's any rules against it. Sana Del Corazon, did I get it right? Mm -hmm. Sana. Sana's um, kiddo is in, is actually in my kiddo's class. I've known Sana um, and her family for um, a 
well over a year now, I think. Um, and she and I have been already coordinating. Sana, would you like to say a few words about what brings you to PTO before we vote on that position and then we will move our way through the others? Sure. Um, I, I'm, I love, uh, we're new to the school and I'm, I'm already in love with Bancroft even though my teacher thinks I'm really safe, but that's okay. <laughs> um, and I just, I want to in, uh, increase uh, participation of uh, Spanish speaking people. I speak a little Spanish, but I know that the school is very diverse and, um, and you know, and I, so I just want to encourage more parents to be involved and I've, uh, I'm willing to do things. <laughs> when, when Sana and I sat down at, um, at May Day the other day, uh, we dis we determined that her joy and skill set complement the stuff I don't have the energy to put forth anymore, like PowerPoints and organizing and forms and all those things that once upon a time I did all the time for service, um, but now I've done that for work for too long and I can't do it for service. So my I see myself as um, the person who will make reasoned arguments in support of whatever it is we need to make reasoned arguments in support of. Um, and I'm really happy to have Sana um, working with me on this. So we'll we'll figure out a way to manage this. But first, you have to vote in favor. If anyone would like to put themselves forth as a president alone or some other combination of presidents, essentially, I am stepping back as president and putting myself back forward as Co-president with Sana for your consideration. Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, why are you looking at co-presidency instead of a president and vice presidency? Um, well, I think that stepping into V Paul's shoes and observing what the president tends to do versus the vice president, um, and that division of labor as I've seen it makes me feel like I can't do it alone. I'll, I'll add to that. As, as the current vice president, I feel like my capacity in the vice president role has been pretty limited. And my main tasks have been around supporting the teachers and responding to their requests and organizing the dinners when we have after school events and we need to provide food. I'm fine maintaining those tasks. And the vice president role can be open for election. I think when I'm, I was nominated for vice president. We didn't have this great amount of people in the room and it was kind of like, well, let's fill this in for the time being. And so I think if that solves a problem. I don't, I think that that's an option that we can discuss and see what makes sense. Okay. Is there anyone else besides Sana and possibly Robin and maybe holding her position and doing her things interested in the president or vice president positions in PTO? <laughs> okay, on, I, I count to 10 in my head. So that usually gives people on Zoom enough time. Yes. I just want to ask a clarifying question. Okay. So, um, in the new regime, there would be a <laughs> two uh, two co-presidents and still a vice president. Okay. That would that, that was my lead. Like president, vice president, that would just take on all of the president's former duties. I love the idea of a co-president, though, with, like, equal yeah. status. You know, I mean, if, I, if I may suggest, we're such a great dynamic group, and it, it really is about take on what you can and give off what you can, and someone else will pick it up. I think the structure of two co-presidents and the vice president uh, works great because from a transition standpoint, the things that we know that we need to get sort of done in a timely manner, you, you already know how to do. And then the things... Uh, where uh, leadership and direction and uh, and change uh, that certainly could be a co-president type of type of task, and then that that allows for transition to sort of occur without anybody feeling overwhelmed. Does that does that soothe over any bumps in this particular arrangement? I feel like regardless, I will be doing the same amount of tasks, yeah. and I don't need a vice president label to do those tasks. And if it makes more sense <laughs> to have a can president and vice president, I think that that is appropriate. Can can we be okay with co-presidents and a vice president, though? Mm -hmm. That was I, I second co-president and vice president. Okay. 
<laughs> I, I just wanted to know that there are some, there's chat, so is anyone oh, wondering oh. the chat? Oh, you, you can see the chat. No, that was an old chat. Oh, That's old. Okay. 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 I just want to make sure yeah. no one was trying yeah. to Wonderful. get their user. Um, a, 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 ch a change we're going to execute on Zoom is yes or no instead of one or two. Sorry, B. Paul. So when you vote online, <laughs> yes, if you are in favor of the initiative, no, if you are not in favor of the initiative. I heard a, I think first and a second. So let's take it to the floor for a vote. All in favor of. You need the, to repeat what we're voting on. I'm sorry. All in favor of the. All in favor of the co-presidents of Shauna Cox and Sana Del Corazon. I yes or no. And I, vice president. Oh, oh, so oh we'll, we'll, take, we'll take that as a separate. We'll take that as a separate vote. Uh, retaining the vice president role. That is what we're voting on then. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. I think the ayes have it. <laughs> yeah. No against? Any against? Sorry, just got to call the question. Yeah. yeah. Right. Do we count? But that, the ayes have it. We don't need that. And then okay. you can do your yes or no, one or two, green or blue. <laughs> can you watch the chat for yeah. me? I got, I got three yeses and two ones. I think that's good. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Okay, that's great. So, I, um, Robin, I would love it if you would stay as our vice president. I think we really need a vice president. Will you take that role, and/or is anyone else interested in? I it? welcome all other nominations. <laughs> <laughs> I do not need to maintain that title to do the things I want to do in the in the scheme of what I do with the teachers, and I will certainly be available to support both of you in your roles. But if someone else has interest in joining and being the vice president, I totally welcome that and would be thrilled to welcome another face to the mix. Yeah. Can I just ask again, this is Melissa, um, like Shana, you say you, you would love to have a vice president. Can you explain what you see that role as doing? Um, still what Robin has been doing and providing some continuity in this, the senior leadership of the PTO. I think, Melissa, part of I think maybe what you're asking is kind of like, what are the tasks of the two presidents, both and the vice president? In the past, we had strong leadership from B. Paul, and I think, you know, me in the vice president role, like I just only took on so much what was what I could do. And so it really can be shaped, however, if someone wants the vice president role and wants different tasks or whatever, like we figure out what that. Well, I, I also envision the leadership of the PTO coming together at least once in the next like few weeks to strategize these sorts of nitty gritty details. Yeah, I guess what I'm asking because I don't really like I understand you want Robin to be in that role. I don't understand what the role is in general if someone wanted to step into that. It, it, uh, I think the easiest the the easiest answer, uh, particularly for these top three, is that it, it has become in the last, and maybe this is my fault, but in the last four years, it's become a relationship type thing. Whoever was sat in the president role, did some tasks and shared some tasks down that the vice president took. In the last uh, year or so, or more than, uh, Robin really looked into the school. Great relationship building with the teachers great um, uh, uh, form management for our the administrative part of the classroom funding. And so then that'll, that allowed my role to focus on some other things. So that might be different moving forward, right. but Robin has already uh, said, and she has done a great job, and it would be good for transition that the, the two specific tasks, the inward looking toward the teachers right. and the classroom projects remain with Robin um through this transition period and if now that we have sana and and shana uh if there is another relationship that needs to be fostered in a leadership place that can that can that can function but um, um i i can add to this so michelle or melissa sorry i'm looking at the bylaws and the role of the president is literally to assist the president and carry out president's duties in his or her absence or inability to serve. 
But I feel like right now what Robin is describing are critical functions of the leadership of the PTO and putting that back on the president doesn't make any sense. So instead, I would probably suggest that we take a look at the bylaws, how they align with the structure and the operations of the PTO and consider codifying the vice president role in a way that's more than support the president. So I'm wondering, because we're asking for a commitment from people, I'm like very limited time to think about it. If mm -hmm. it's something that we could have like presented to us so we could then think about if this is a commitment I can make this clear mm -hmm. instead of choosing to step up right now. Well, the, the, that, that I think that certainly is a possibility. The way that PTO has been structured, the end of the year we elect the three that need that legally need to exist mm -hmm. in the beginning of the year we elect the others uh, who are more task oriented and this is when we pull in new families new faces uh and then they have that year to sort of find uh, i think it sounds like there's a notion of pushing that further down the line i think that that um we, the pto does kind of have to hit the ground running for, with a couple of things here so I, um, I, if there are, there are other opportunities. There are, there's a couple other elections that need to occur. That's the at large positions. And those are where people can commit less or more project specific or just general and, and be involved throughout the year. Um, I don't think this is a closed door. If you're not elected now, you will not be able to get involved. That's not the case. Um, but I do think that September is time to nail down, uh, the named positions in order to move on with business for the rest of the year. Well, and I, I also um, like a, a, an election structure where you have a past president, president, president elect, so that you're actually elected even before you take office, now recognizing that student life, school life churns. Um, I think that that can be difficult, but I, I, rec I recognize how difficult it is to make a commitment um, in the moment. And I also know that many of us have made a commitment in the moment and been well supported by the people here and been able to be successful. So if that's something that you would like to consider, I really encourage you to. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm just speaking like <laughs> my anxiety does not let me make it in the moment decision. I'm just saying, maybe someone else is that way. <laughs> so, um, yeah, for the sake of time, I do want to put the motion to the yes. floor. And so I, I, uh, uh, I um, put out the motion of electing uh, Robin Anderson in the vice president role for the 2023-24 school year. Is there a second? Okay. There's a second. All in favor of Robin Anderson as vice president for this school year? Aye. Ayes have the room. Yes, online. Wonderful. Thank you, Robin. And uh, I think that thinking about structure of PTO is a great activity for PTO. Um, the next position up for consideration is secretary, and that's Tana's position. Tana? Tana? No, it's going to be tough. I stand, so we all have similar names. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, look at that. Yes. Uh, um, with, are you willing to continue this role first? Yes. <clears throat> Is there anyone else in the room who would like the role of secretary? Or Is there anyone online? I Sorry, when I say in the room, I mean you, everybody on in the meeting, please forgive me, online. Anyone interested in taking over the secretary role? Okay, can I make a motion? I'm not sure I can make a motion. I'll move for you. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, motion is to re-elect Hannah as secretary. Is there a second? Okay. There's a second. All in favor of Tana being reelected as secretary for the coming year, say aye or yes or no. Aye. I can actually like see the yeses coming in on this tiny little screen over there. So uh, yes, one. Like okay, so thank you, Paul, for reminding me about the at large. Um, if I may, the the at large positions don't exist in constitution or bylaws, but they they we created them because we wanted more people to be involved, and we understood. 
that it was challenging to take on a named role and commit to all 12 months. So the idea of the at-large was uh, you come and go as you need. Maybe you chair one of our initiatives, readathon and spring plant sales because of their size. Those are named roles. But the other, you know, there were other initiatives that have come and gone over the years. Melissa has done a great job um, at large. Tom has done a great job at large. Uh, Joanne was at large until last year. And they all took on things that were interesting to them that was beneficial to us. That's kind of a great thing. So um, I think really the question for the at larges, and, and I'm going to put this forward to you, Shauna, is to uh, bring back those at larges who want to come back and look out for anyone new who would like to be involved and maybe they have a project they'd like to take down to council to board uh, in the coming year. So what V. Paul is sort of saying is if you would like to be sort of required to be here every second Monday, either on Zoom or online, to be a voting member of the board <laughs> um, in for count for quorum and or for any uh, online voting that happens in between meetings for small expenditures. I suggest putting yourself forward as an at large. And I would also ask whether Tom and Melissa would like to continue in their at large positions. Tom is a yes. Melissa? I'm glad to do that. Wonderful. <laughs> Any new? Mel, would you like to join the at large? Yes. Wonderful. Yeah. And Eric. I think that makes a lot of sense to have four, but we probably need to vote on that. Um, so, all in, oh, any others? Uh, all in favor of allowing four at-large members of the PTO board for this school year, say aye. 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 Oh, I forgot to call for the motions. Okay. Uh, uh, Looks good online. Excellent. Thank you. All in favor of the four people who put themselves forward, Mel, Eric, Tom, and Melissa, being elected as at-large members of the PTO. <sighs> Say aye. Aye. <laughs> online. I saw more than, that's more than one word. What was that one? Yes, aye. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Welcome. Excellent. Thank you both. I'm really looking forward to, because really, Eric, I think you've been here. I, I thought you were. <laughs> so, and thank you, Tom. Um, Tom provides very excellent updates with respect to um, the light policy. The pizza has just come in. I believe, have I, who have I missed? What have I missed? No, 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 about the call. I was about. Comment. We should bring the kids up first. Oh, okay. And then, and then overall. Let, I can do that. Let's go get the kiddos. This is a good stopping point um, because elections are complete and now we, I promise, I know it's looking like, oh my God, how are we gonna get through this? But the, the information transmission updates of this first meeting are going to be relatively slow. So we're still gonna get you out um, by seven o'clock. And I had a question for you, Sue. Teacher update isn't in the normal agenda. So we get a principal's update, but I, thought maybe it would be nice to have a teacher update. Is that a possibility? What are you, I guess, what are you asking? I don't, um, as in, would you like a, would the teachers like a named slot in the regular agenda for telling us things? You don't have to answer that. I've never asked them that, so <laughs> okay. I can find out. Okay, yeah. sounds good. And I'm looking at you because you're usually here too. So sure. I was like, hey, Sue, but. Mandy also is now a representative of the teachers and the parents, which I think is pretty great. Oh, you, oh I'm so yes, yes. Can we have a health, health office section? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, and uh, okay, so everybody online, everybody here, like, let's just take a break, even though the kids don't eat the pizza until the kids get here. I think we could just, just keep like, going. Oh, yeah, keep going. going. All right. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. We're gonna change time. All right. Yeah. You're power, we're powering through. All right. Um, I think that means if I can make PowerPoint go forward, um, that would be principal's update from Diego and Christine. Great. The floor is yours. Uh, well, 
we started the year. I think that's uh, I, knew, I sent a, a quick email this morning uh, to families. I think it's been a really nice start uh, to our school year. We've kind of settled into some of our really familiar rituals and routines, uh, welcomed uh, all of our kindergartners and high fivers. So that's been just a delight. And obviously some of our new families uh, too and the older grades that have, have joined us. Um, a couple of, I think, big things is all of our kindergartners and high fivers will be getting uh, new devices. And so they'll all be getting iPads. All of our high five to second graders use iPads. And then our older students, our third graders, uh, will be getting new Chromebooks. So they'll be trading in their iPads eventually and getting Chromebooks. And then our fourth and fifth graders will be using whatever Chromebooks they uh, had last year. Um, I think some of the big pieces is our enrollment numbers. That's what we're always looking at very closely to start the year, and we are over our projection. Um, I've been in very close contact uh, regularly with my associate superintendent to just keep checking on our numbers and making sure that teachers are trying to take really accurate attendance. Um, but right now we're sitting, um, I think the last count I sent to teachers was about 467 kids. Um, and we just added, I think, seven, eight, eight, nine, eight, nine. eight <laughs> to our list. Uh, so we'll be right over 475 kiddos, um, which is awesome. Uh, but we were projected for 390. Wow. So we are <laughs> way over. Um, and so we do, uh, they do look at numbers and uh, our grade level numbers, and then they do adjustments starting in October. And so, um, I, I can't provide any details or updates now because I don't have any, uh, but I just know that it's, you know, we are significantly over our uh, projected number in the spring. What adjustments do they make? So they look at staffing adjustments. I don't know right now um, if we are over enough to be adding classrooms. We might uh, be given more support staff, uh, provided funds to post support staff, uh, positions um, in the past years that I've been here where we've been over we've added associate educators um, I've never been part of a classroom being added I know that's happened at other schools um, I know other schools have also lost classrooms because they did they were under enrolled um, and so I, I, I don't know what it could look like I don't think I mean I'm looking at numbers right now I think our first grade is pretty high. We're at 78 students uh, total for three classrooms. I know our fourth and fifth grades are probably our, our biggest uh, grades right now, but I don't think there's enough students to warrant another classroom. Um, but I'd be surprised. And so uh, we are looking at those very closely and mm -hmm. hoping that we get um, at least some funding or some sort of budget or HR uh, adjustment. Just a real quick question. Is there a kind of cap on the number of students this facility is built to accommodate? Uh, yes, uh, this facility can hold 625 students. Okay. Uh, and currently we have, yeah, currently we have, um, after we did uh, construction and we filled in the U, uh, we, did, we did not want to dedicate the internal classrooms as classrooms. Um, and so they are breakout spaces, they are uh, inter intervention space, uh, just because mo most of them back up to the gym. So like 124 and some of the other rooms, the gym is the background. And so we're not using, we don't like to use all these classrooms. Uh, Sue has a space where we do our, our IV meetings, our, our team collaboration meetings. So that could be used as a space. Um, so technically the capacity of the building is 625 kids. Yep. Just curious. Yep. Yep, and we have been there. Uh, we've been pretty close to 600. I think the, the highest was 607 yep. or 608, one of my first years uh, here, uh, even before we had the addition. Oh, wow. So we were just crammed in here real, real tight. Um, but yeah, with the CDD and becoming a community school, we you know went from the high 500s down to the high 300s. And then every year we've uh, increased our enrollment. Um, and right now, I mean, it's great because a lot of families are coming from the community, a lot of families that are coming from the charters, coming from other schools to come to Bancroft, and it's fantastic. Um, we also are continue to have um, a lot of immigrant families and newcomer families, uh, mostly from Ecuador, uh, coming to, to our 
So uh, yeah, I'll continue. So that's one of our biggest things right now is just trying to think about what our enrollment uh, looks like and what adjustments will, will need to be made. Um, and then I did want to talk about dismissal a little bit with, with families, and I'll be sending out a note to, to everyone. Um, uh, I can't continue, sorry. <laughs> I tried. We're going to take a quick break while people get pizza. You know, the, why don't the adults just follow the kiddos and get pizza and come back and then we can talk to them? Did you folks catch it online? We're going to just break real quick because uh, we've got some extra excited kids up here now. Um.
Okay, hi, hi folks online. We're about to be back. Thank you very much for your patience. I appreciate it. All right. Back to Diego to finish the principal, the assistant principal output. Sure. Um, I, I was going to talk about this missile label in a second, but I, I also would, uh, I forgot to mention, we have a lot of new staff that also started at Bancroft. Um, and I also prefaced this at our welcome back meetings with staff that it's not because people left. Um, so we added a number of positions. Uh, so Christine being one of them. And so she had an interim title in February and through the end of the year. She's an official assistant principal, so we're really excited about that. Uh, we added a third grade section, and so Miss Amy Vanderlyn was uh, taking that role on. Um, we added an advanced learner teacher position, and so Miss Hartman who got back out of the classroom and is in the advanced teacher roles. So we hired uh, Miss Rainey Lacher to be a fifth grade teacher. We added two more uh, EL multilingual teachers. Um, we have two new high five AEs, Mandy being one of them. Uh, we have a well, this one, we have a new band teacher. So for our fifth graders, she started uh, last week. And so I think fifth graders will be working today and tomorrow to check out instruments and do those things. Um, we have the, uh, two intervention triads. I don't know if you've heard about those, but um, we were given uh, two intervention triads, so two licensed teachers. And then along with each licensed teacher, there's two uh, support staff AEs. And so we actually hired uh, Beth Anderson back out of retirement. I don't know if anybody here had Ms. Anderson as a, a teacher. Um, she is now back on staff as one of the intervention teachers. Uh, and Ms. Kearney Burns, who actually was a student teacher here about four or five years ago. She is now one of the intervention teachers. And then we have four AEs, Mr. Drake, uh, teacher Emily, uh, Mr. Jordan, and Ms. Avanya, who are going to be working with students uh, grades K through five. Uh, we have another uh, classroom support AE that we were able to add. Her name is Ms. Rachel. And we added another student support AE to work with Mr. L and Ms. Cammie. And her name is Adesha. So, and Parvin, oh my gosh, I can't forget about Parvin. Parvin is our new secretary. And if you have not met Parvin, she's absolutely amazing. And she is actually a former Bancroft student. Oh, wow. So, That's so great. yep, and we found her cute little face in one of the yearbooks. <laughs> <laughs> but this was the first school that she went to when she came to the United States. Oh, so, yep, that's so cool. she started here as a fourth grader and has very fond memories and so wanted to give back to the to her community. And so we're very excited to have uh, part of it. So yeah, a lot of new faces and new staff. I'm currently working on our new staff banner, so we'll see those uh, once I finish that and get that ordered up, but that'll always be up. So um, there's lots of new staff. I said to welcome them to our community. And then dismissal, uh, mainly focusing on the parent pickup. I hope on your end it's going smoothly. Uh, one thing that I'm going to ask of all families is that uh, this is hard for me to ask because I love community and conversation and having fun. But it's really hard at, in the afternoon when everyone gathers on the blacktop and people continue to talk and I can't see who's here to pick up a kid, who's already picked up a kid. And it just comes, it becomes a little confusing on the inside of the school to see who has or has not been picked up and who has or who does not have a student with them. And so I, I need to figure out how to kindly say that <laughs> to folks to kind of disperse. And I can help. I'm play. always out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go to the field. I'll stand yeah. by yeah. his phone. Yeah. Go to the Dairy Queen. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Totally. That makes sense. Yeah, because there's some that just stand here and you're like yeah. waiting and waiting and waiting and they're like, I've been waiting here for I was like, I didn't see you because <laughs> everyone's talking. So anyways, I do love the, the camaraderie and the community and the, like I said, like the conversation is fun. So it's hard to help people to move along. <laughs> but uh, anyways, I'm really uh, appreciative of uh, all of your support. I love your kids, and I think they're what makes this community such a great, and this school such a great place. So I, I always say thank you for your continued support of Bancroft School, and I, I do mean that, so I appreciate that. That's all I have. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you, Diego. Does anyone have any questions for Diego while I try to figure out how to get PowerPoint to stop me? I have one. Okay. Uh, we may ask about, um, I don't know if it got mentioned, was a Spanish teacher 
Uh, was the Spanish position filled? Oh, yeah. Understand? We have a new Spanish teacher. Her name is Maestra Elaine. Um, and she has been visiting some classrooms and hopefully we'll be starting her Spanish schedule next week. Excellent. Yeah. And we have, we're fully staffed except for one position. And we have one SCA that we need for our autism program. And I have, I forgot to tell candidates. We have candidates that we need to interview. So I'm very excited and we'll be fully staffed hopefully very soon. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Uh, the president and vice president have thoroughly updated you on everything we might have to say, except that Robin might want to say a few things about the types of things she does. Did I overhear that or no? I certainly can. I just feel like this first meeting is the, is the time to, sure. to talk in detail a little bit about the process and then, and then. Yeah. So one of the main things the PTO does is support the teachers. And when teachers have a need in their classroom that can't be met either through their already established what they have in their room or there's not funding or support available from the school, they can submit a form to the PTO for requesting funds. So sometimes that looks like the fifth grade ambassadors are doing a program and they need supplies, or it might be that they're going on a field trip and need something for part of that. So it's just like one off things that come up or books they might want to purchase for their classroom. Um, trying to think of other examples. I'm looking at you, Miss Sue. Um, Miss Sue coordinates a lot of this with me, and I we have the form bookmarked. Yeah. <laughs> so we get the form request, and what tends to happen is we usually have enough time where we can bring that item then to one of these meetings to talk about it and review it as a group. Um, if there's not time, or if we just had a meeting, that's where we might do our email chain to all the. Um, board members to say, here's been the request, can you vote via email, so that the staff doesn't have to wait until we have another um, meeting. So that's one of the main things that we do to support the teachers. Um, also, when there are teacher conferences, we buy the teacher's dinner, which I think goes over really well. <laughs> um, and so I already wrote down, I'll have to find out how many staff are in the building so that when we have those meals, we can be prepared. Um, we usually purchase dinner from somewhere in Midtown Global Market or somewhere else in the neighborhood um, and set that up for the staff to have a nice dinner while they're here working late. So I, I'd ask uh, Diego at your next uh, staff meeting if you want to socialize that out to your new folks so that they know the process and, and that we're excited to have them engage in whatever way that they might need. Um, I think sometimes it gets a little forgotten, uh, um, and then it gets a little last minute. So if we can catch them early, and then we're good. Just real quick, do we have a general sense of how many of those requests went out like last year? I feel like it was more last year than the year before. So Correct. That's, yeah, that's I wouldn't say, I haven't looked at it lately, but I think last year there was maybe like a total of six requests early. Okay. Yeah. So not a not a huge number of requests that come in. Uh, this seems like a really useful resource. Yes. Yeah. So hopefully. Yeah. So I, I, the requests too was like the headset situation, and it was a good discussion. And then we all supplied headsets. And I thought it was like a good way to figure out a supply situation and how could we like come up with a going forward. Yeah. And there was a lot of work too to figure out what still worked, what didn't work, how we could keep things right. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm happy that you sort of broke the uh, headset wall there. I did want to bring up, it sounds like none of them survived last year. <laughs> not well, provided. Is that a fair statement? They, they're, you know, yeah. Okay. Okay. They're, they're hard on them, you know. Yeah. yeah. But we have some, we have extra, like we have leftovers from last year that, um, there might not be brand new, but we have a little supply for kids. There's a buffer that yeah, still buffer. exists. Yeah. I think that was really the, 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 the question I had. I know I know we we made the funding with the intention of moving to the model we have now. Right. I just don't know what's left over that can be a buffer, and it sounds like there is a buffer. I feel like I'm okay about it. All right. Oh. And um, I, in the interest of in the interest of making sure that we finish on time, I, I do want to keep us moving forward. So thank you for the update about the um, uh, headphones. Is there anything else? Okay, so we are gonna have an awesome year. Um, okay, so treasure update one we can't see 
the numbers because of the Zoom. And there is actually a huge question on the bottom of that that I'm going to let hit the room and then we are not going to talk about it because it is 641 and that is going to take a long time. Um, and that is that currently the field trip account is $8,000 under where it was last year. And based on what B. Paul was saying in terms of how it's funded, um, that might be problematic. And Liz had proposed that um, the PTO essentially fund $8,000 from the main account into the field trip account, which is probably a fairly significant deviation from what we usually use our fund raised funds for. So I think that that is going to be something for the board to consider and bring forward at the next meeting. And I think the, the issue might be moved once we connect with um, uh, the Masonic group again, to find out when or if they're able to this year. And I think that email probably needs to go out. Great. Awesome. Um, but otherwise, we're relatively solvent and similar to last year. Yeah. So. I, uh, did, may I bring up one topic under this? Or sure. Okay. Uh, there, there is one issue, uh, and I, I'll, we're calling this to Diego's attention uh, as well. It looks like someone may have fraudulently written a check in our account over the summer. And uh, Liz is going to investigate that. But it was an $850 account to landscaping. And so my question is, did the PPO fund landscaping in a legitimate way in July? To the tune of $850? Yeah, we didn't think so either. I had no memory of, of us making an approval. It, uh, the, all the signs point to it being a bad check. Um, it's out of sequence. It was written. It was a uh, automated rather than handwritten. And we handwrite all of our things. Uh, uh, some other thing. So Liz, our treasurer, the treasurer will will follow that rule down. But it, I felt like it was important to get that to council and be transparent about the process. Uh, we don't have any answers to it. But if considering that from a staffing point of view, there was not landscaping that got paid for by PPO that we just forgot about. Then I think we have a we have a clearer action moving forward. Awesome. Thank you yep. for that part. Okay, Kate. Yeah, you're up. Great. Hi, everybody. Um, Vipa and I are actually doing the safe routes to school work together, um, which I'm super grateful for. Over the summer, we met with uh, the Minneapolis Public Schools Active Living Coordinator and MinDOT and got stuff underway. We do have a resolution that. Shauna and I signed this summer, so we are in contract with MinDOT for about just shy of $20,000 um, over the next two years to support safe routes for Bingcroft. Um, we do want to retroactively vote on this resolution per advice from BPAL to get it recorded. So if you can click the link, it'll pop up the resolution. Um, um, and to be clear, this is money that MDOT is giving us, not money we're giving them correct that is true yes. <laughs> <laughs> we are receiving twenty thousand dollars and we um for conversations with liz we will be invoicing Minda. so we spend pto money and they reimburse us um, what kind of things yeah. to purchase yeah that's the next slide that's yeah right. and so and then just just to be clear on that it's it's a federal it's federal funding distributed through the state system down to local municipalities and we, along with the district itself and other units, applied for this grant. And, and Kate did such a wonderful job writing that grant that um, that we were awarded. It. And this is a, again a, an idea of if you were to ask me, the initiative started with we wanted a stop sign, and two and a half years later, here we are, right? So, so we still don't have a stop sign, but we got. To <laughs> It's not supposed to be sharing. Oh, no, you guys aren't. Ugh. Well, is it because you shared a window? Yes, it's because you shared a window. We could just read. Would you like yeah, to read? Yeah, I'll read you a uh, resolution. Thank you. Um, whereas the Minnesota Department of Transportation Safe Routes to School program assists schools and communities by making it safer for children to walk and bike to school, and whereas MnDOT Safe Routes solicits applications to enable schools and communities to implement Safe Routes non-infrastructure activities. That's the granting program that's not sign related. So we are not getting permanent signs. Whereas Bancroft PTO is awarded a Safe Routes Boost Grant, these funds would be used to provide non-infrastructure activities to local communities to develop Safe Routes to School initiatives that increase safety and encourage more children to walk and bicycle to school. 
and whereas no local match funding is required, and whereas safe access will boost grant activities will commence after the grant agreement is fully executed. What we agree to is therefore be it resolved, Bancroft PTO authorizes the Bancroft PTO president and or Safe Routes chair to enter into an agreement with MnDOT for financial assistance to fund the Safe Routes School Boost Grant and eligible expenses to Bancroft PTO president and Safe Routes and or Safe Routes chair is authorized to execute the agreement. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thanks, y'all. Online. Well, thank you. That's exciting. That's awesome. great work. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now. If you hit the next slide, so yeah. some activities for this coming year. Quick overview. Um, let's see. Tell the people on Zoom. I know they're not seeing. Oh, that's supposed to be on the other slide. Basically, we have some logistics to work through that we're going to pop into email. Um, if anyone is a Do you want logistics person or? and wants to volunteer their time giving us advice, we welcome you to alert us um or if you know tax people who want to help us understand some things that would be great we're going to pop a bid for a bike maintenance event no question what sort of tax um, um non-profit tax advice related to um paying stipend. okay it's specifically we we don't carry employees and <laughs> and, and uh we don't really want to be in the business of carrying employees and worrying about 1099s or maybe sure. we need to and i think that's the advice that we're looking for the two to date, most of the way that we reimburse anybody for anything is either they pay and there's a receipt, or maybe there's a five dollar target gift card. You know, um, and this is what what we're asking for in terms of services from our community. Uh, if people do step forward, uh, we do more, we do significantly more. There, of course, there's also the notion of professional services, and that's the other route that we can go. But one of the things we are looking forward to is involving more community in this particular. Okay. Perfect. Great. Um, okay, next slide. So the for this coming year, we'll be focused on traffic safety awareness, which is messaging, safety signage in the neighborhood, exploring and understanding existing walking school buses and bike trains, looking to expand that, expand supporting and expanding the safety patrol program, and installing a bike maintenance station and um, partnering with Mr. Maxwell on some expanded education opportunities around bike maintenance and bringing in events, um, professional bike people to help fix family bikes so that more families can bike if they want to. The end. <laughs> That's awesome. Nice work. Yeah. That's amazing. It's amazing. It was really amazing work. Um, I, I think that we don't have time to go into how, like, this was very modest for what kind of undertaking this was. And kudos to you both for making it happen. So. I do want one push. I'll be really quick. One push really quick. We are looking for safety patrol adults. People to volunteer their mornings or their afternoons. There are a couple of us already. If we can get more, we have enough students to do two intersections uh, that, that have traffic. And we know from our family poll last year that people are interested in more safety at that particular one. If we can get more adults involved, then we could have more safety patrols at, at the corners. Miss Finney is uh, starting off Thursday, and she's already trying to recruit. So we'd like to help her with that, since that's the hit the ground running activity right now. Everything else is kind of has a time frame. Safety patrols more urgent. So yeah, there were like over 70 children at the safety patrol meeting. Um, so if there were more adults. You could cover like all the intersections. Yeah, including the one that we want the stop sign for. Yep. <laughs> Does any adult ever do safety patrol with a kid that I have a six-year-old? Which I'm bringing my fourth grader here to do safety patrol, but I'm guessing I can't do safety yeah, patrol I, with a six-year-old. He's a you know, and not that there's an official ruling, but I, it's the same way when I volunteered, Styles wasn't allowed, yeah, yeah. and so I would send him to Diego. Well, in that direction, <laughs> but okay. um, I don't. I, I I would say not for the sake of liability. Oh, okay. I know you want to move on. So I think what thing I faced is I have an older kid and a younger kid. And so last year I only, Ellery only did patrol a couple of days a week because otherwise all those other mornings I have to kill 15 minutes outside with Adam yeah. before we can come in the building, which yeah. is totally fine. Yeah. But like it just adds up. Yeah. So maybe there's also some coordination of like, hey, if you're going to do patrol, I watch our kids on the playground. Yeah. Or I don't know, like it yeah. can be creative. If, yeah, it's to that point. Okay. That's a great idea. And so, and then just one last thing, because the chat came up, and I don't want to ignore it. 
Megan did bring up speaking liability or adult volunteers background check. Mm -hmm. To date, and because this is a program that we are trying to grow, that also means laying the groundwork for proper logistics, which doesn't really exist. It's really been a teacher with a bunch of students standing wearing orange, right? And now we're looking at getting more parents and caregivers involved, uh, doing educational events, that kind of thing. Involving more people does mean that logistics. So Megan, I think that is something that's gonna be uh, worked on. I can say, uh, uh, I volunteer and I've been background checked because I, I'm, I'm a sports coach and a hub master. So that was the way I got Miss Penny to agree to pick me up. <laughs> and so I imagine moving forward, there will be some of that stuff. Yes. Okay. And last thing. This grant also funds Somali and Spanish interpretation and translation awesome. yes. for every of awesome. awesome. and all the documents. Wonderful. Okay. Um, read upon an update. All right. Well, I can make this super fast. Um, but for people who are new to Bancroft, Readathon is one of our biggest fundraisers, and it is our, it's our first fundraiser. Um, it happens in October. It's a two-week period where kids read as much as they can and log their minutes, and they can win prizes. Um, and we have prizes for minutes read, and then the, like different tiers of prizes for basically how many minutes you've read. And then the top two readers in each grade get a special prize. Um, we do not, we used to have a prize for top fundraiser. We chose to discontinue that and just do top reader just to make sure that it was, you know, it felt like more equitable. Mm -hmm. um, so coinciding with Readathon is also our book <coughs> fair. Um, Moon Palace Books is once again doing our book fair. There is usually an online option where teachers can make their own wish lists and people can choose to order their own books and through that book fair, we or learn a percentage of um, all sales, and then Ms. Warner is able to buy books with that for the media center. Um, so yeah, that. How does the readathon make money? Oh <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> so kids read, <laughs> kids read, um, and they ask their family and friends to sponsor them with either you can do like, hey, I five cents a minute, or you people can just give you $20. Um, so it it's a great fundraiser. Um, normally, it's very expensive for parents. <laughs> but um, it's a great fundraiser. It, it's a really exciting one for kids. Um, our prize, top prize for the top two readers for the last couple of years has been a stuffed Bancroft Bulldog, which I need to inventory the prize closet and see where we are in Bulldogs. Are we at zero? We're at zero blocks. So well, no, um, there's there's a bunch in there. No, there, no, there's not, there isn't. But there there is a standing <laughs> purchase that needs to be made. So we did okay. approve last year's PDOs. Oh. The purchase never occurred, so we can't. Okay. Yeah. okay, yeah. So uh, we are fine on the rest of the prizes that we have used in the past. I'm trying to just run those out before we make any changes because we have a lot. Um, and the bulldogs we will discuss. Um, but yeah, so Moon Palace is our vendor. Angela, the owner of Moon Palace. Uh, her child, Bunny, was in fifth grade last year. Um, so Baycroft family, they're super supportive. And yeah, so I have the dates. I'm working on updating all the documentation. Um, Luke Kylis and I are going to have a chat to talk about like what kinds of books we liked having at the book fair, and suggestions for what we order. So if anyone has any suggestions for what they would like to see, just let me know. Um, I have some ideas, but I would love to hear from other people like what what's really exciting for you to buy. Thank you, Mandy. Yeah. Um, Thanks, everyone. Will, um, cause... Oh, sorry, one more thing. Was... So <laughs> if anyone is interested in like just learning about how to do that, my plan was to probably not do it once Edie graduates from Bancroft, so I have two more years, including this year. So if anyone is interested in, like, they think this is a really fun event, because it really is, and your big obligation is done at the beginning of the year, <laughs> um, just get in touch with me if you want to, like, partner and learn and you know i do want to i do want to strongly suggest that this yeah. is one of the keystone events and, and projects of pto and um and because of that it's really important that transition is smooth and it's also one of the events that does have a lot of just tasks mm -hmm. so um we could always use help in the in tabulating the forms managing book fair uh during the tuesday wednesday of mea 
Um, I mean, there are many ways. So if there are people here now, I'm looking at everybody in the eye, <laughs> that are looking for ways to get involved, this would be a great one. I'm also going to bring up Turkey Bingo that comes up in November. Our October, November, we go bonkers. And it's great. <laughs> and then we take it easy and we, and the school does winter arts night <laughs> in December. <laughs> yeah. So Diego did say he had some thoughts about the those two act events. So we'll we'll talk about that. Okay. <laughs> not, 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 no, 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 not now. No, yeah. Not so thanks, guys. Now. Appreciate it. Um, I think I was the last on the agenda, right? Yeah. I believe Tess has something. No, actually, I'm gonna go through the curriculum and sort. Never, never mind. mind. Okay. I'm gonna have a meeting this week. Talk more. Great. Never mind. Okay. okay. <laughs> Great. Um, with regard to the the teachers and the expenditures, one of the things that I plan to do as um as president is co-president now um is put together um like a like a handout and with any luck introduce myself to like all the teachers maybe introduce me and so on to all the teachers but i want to make sure that all the teachers are aware of the opportunity to request those funds um they are on demand and they haven't run out but i i fear a day where that might happen and or something some project happens in a new teacher's classroom that they didn't know and you may well have already told them, but people have to hear things seven times before it sticks. So, um, yeah, that that's a, a plan, a plan to make sure that that info gets out. Okay, any other? I just have a question. If the PTO, so one of the schools I work at, the PTO, instead of making it a request, because as teachers get busy, and et cetera, every teacher in the school gets a lump sum of money at the beginning of the year to fund something and depending on the PTO budget, like I think one year I got like $10. Great, right? But also then it it also brings to mind, right? Like, oh, this is here, now I can remember to request. So I don't know if PTO has ever thought of just like. I, I think what, the one thing that may be different, Diego, uh, you may correct me on this. The, the One of the things in our process is to check with the office first if the office would fund. That, that was a key thing that sort of we needed to, there was a time when we needed to make sure that was occurring. Um, so I, I do like the idea of, of, of parceling out uh, in a way that might be equitable, in a way that it makes it a less of a obstacle to request. Mm -hmm. But I do understand from staff, they want a, staff, a faculty to go to staff first with a request before coming to us. So what happens is they get pinged every time a request comes through. Yeah, I think there was a time, and again, when it's, a lot of requests were going to PTO of things that we could have used our budgeted dollars for. Right. And it made it seem like we kept going to mom and dad to ask for money, even though like we had the money. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I appreciate PTO's obviously willingness to support everything that we do in this building, but we also have, like we have funds to purchase supplies and all of those mm -hmm. things. And so, if somebody's coming and saying, hey, we need a whole bunch of markers, well, come down to the office and ask Diego and Christine and the secretary, like, we'll order you some markers. Right. Like, if we don't know, then yeah. we're not going to have it. So, that is, so yeah, there is there is the one step where first they have to ask the school, the ad, admin, whether we have it or not, whether we have the funding. And if we don't, then they can go to PTO if that's a, a, an ask of, of PTO. Because I didn't want PTO just willy-nilly funding everything because most of the things get voted yes and so that's kind of where that that <laughs> yep. that's where that kind of stuff was put in place to, to i think the, the the spirit of it really is all of you families when you're connecting with your teachers what is it that you need what are you doing yeah. you're asking you know your kids are telling you something and they're missing something in the room and that spurs this notion of well did you know pto does this thing and then it becomes very much a partner kind of activity um, but that, but that idea is also nice. Well, and it eliminates then the first come first serve. If we get to a point where we can't yep. fund all the requests, mm -hmm. then it would. And like a new year teacher versus a seasoned teacher mm -hmm. who like has it in their back pocket. Yeah, you no, know, totally. Like Sue, who's got a book for. Right. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm very good at asking for money. So <laughs> when you ask for money from the school, is it something that goes to Parvin and Parvin figures out if you? Um, I, this is, we're getting into some yeah. weeds of how the logistics of this work. I want to be respectful of everyone's time and formally adjourn the meeting. Um, and if there are questions about how the um, little funding projects work, 
we can stay after. Thank you all for coming. The next meeting will be same place, same time, second Monday of October, whatever day of the month. Monday. <laughs> yeah, second, sorry, second Monday. October 9th. Yes. Thank you, everyone, on Zoom. <laughs> Thanks for bearing with me through our first event. All right. Thank you, folks.